The next item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing on next steps for the Crofting Commission. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Fergus Ewing. Cabinet Secretary, 10 minutes, please. Uh, presenting officer, Crofting occupies a unique place in the cultural heritage of Scotland. It's woven into our history, our story of who we are, with a powerful and often poignant resonance. But we must not allow crofting simply to be a relic of our past. Crofting must have a purpose and a role in our present and our future. That purpose, in this government's view, is to support people to remain on the land and to bring people back to the land. The role of government is to enable and support people so to do and also to remain there, creating a sustainable, productive environment in which they can both live and work. So we must invest in crofting as we traditionally understand it. That means providing it with an effective regulatory and statutory framework. For some communities, and indeed the Crofting Commission itself, this last year has been particularly challenging and time will be required to heal the wounds that these communities feel from recent experiences. But I am pleased to advise Parliament that the Commission is now moving on from these testing times and working hard to re-establish its role as an effective regulatory body. We had a very successful set of elections for the Crofting Commission Board in March, with 16 candidates coming forward for six commissioner posts. Together with three commissioners appointed by me, the new board has spent the last few months learning about and settling into their new roles. These are key to enabling the Commission to fulfil its statutory functions and to developing a stable, supportive framework for crofting activity. I can also announce today, presiding officer, the appointment of Mr. Rod McKenzie, the elected commissioner from East Highlands, as the new chair of the Crofting Commission Board. Rod, who is an active crofter, brings with him great experience and knowledge, not just from crofting, but also from his business background. Collectively, the commissioners bring a wealth of crofting talent to the Crofting Commission, I wish them well in their new roles and look forward to engaging with them. In January of this year, Bill Barron was appointed as Chief Executive of the Crofting Commission. Since then, the Chief Executive has rightly focused on the need to renew trust in the Commission, particularly with stakeholders, and on the functionality of the Commission itself. Presenting officer, in February, I published the review of governance at the Commission. I asked for this review to consider specific weaknesses that had become apparent over the last year. The review provided a welcome and timely approach to take stock, to learn from experiences and examine positives as well as opportunities for improvement. Presiding officer, I can advise Parliament that the Commission will today publish its action plan to implement the review findings and that work is already underway to address three key areas for improvement. First, Revised government's arrangements are being developed for the board to build capacity and confidence among commissioners on the extent and limits of their duties. Second, action is being taken internally to improve the systems, procedures and support mechanisms to underpin effective board decision making and collective adherence to those decisions. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the commission has engaged with stakeholders consulting over the procedures for managing common grazings. This engagement is contributing to improving relationships between the Commission and crofters. Significant though its role is, the Crofting Commission is not the sole barometer of health in our crofting communities. This government is committed to investing in and supporting crofting and crofting activities now and in the future. Key to this, presiding officer, is enabling more people to live and work on their land. Since 2007, we have approved over £16 million in grants for Croft Housing, helping to build or improve over 800 homes for crofters and their families. This demonstrates the importance of access to affordable housing in remote areas. It's vital that the Croft House grant continues to fulfil its intended purpose of enabling people to stay and encouraging others to settle in our island and rural communities. I have therefore, presiding officer, increased the budget for this scheme by a further £600,000 in 2017-18, taking the total allocation to £2 million in May this year. But we also provide funding and practical support for crofting. 
The Croft Crofting Agricultural Grant Scheme, known as CAGS, has seen over 3,550 applications since 2010 with a value of £10 million. We are providing support for new and young crofters uh, through the £2 million new entrant startup grant for farming and crofting and the £6 million young farmer startup grant. Crofters can also access a bespoke subscription service provided by the Farm Advisory Service. And we've established the, the Crofting Cattle Improvement Scheme, including a £3 million bull stud, which offers subsidised rates for crofters. Each year, over 100 bulls are hired to over 80 townships with approximately 400 beneficiaries. Signing officer, if we are to encourage and enable more people into crofting, we need to offer them a modern statutory framework. We have committed to review crofting law during this parliament to make the legislation more transparent, understandable and workable in practice. I welcomed the Rural Economy Committee's findings from its crofting inquiry in the debate in May. I have not yet formally responded to that report in full. It provides us with much to consider and to explore further with stakeholders in terms of how to proceed with a new crofting bill. The issues are complex and opinions on them, as the committee's own report demonstrated, are diverse. There are no straightforward answers and there may be no quick solution. Compromise may well be required from us all to reach consensus. I will therefore update the committee on a regular basis as we make progress and reach conclusions on its key findings. I believe that such an iterative process, presiding officer, will enable us to get the new bill right. Traditional crofting has a role to play in our ambitions, to see more people be able to live and work in the highlands and islands, to re-people the highlands and islands. But we must also maximise the opportunity and potential from a modern approach to crofting, and that means enabling different ways of working the land and creating sustainable crofting communities. Connectivity, and especially digital connectivity, is crucial. It enables people in the most remote parts of Scotland to do the same as people in towns and cities. Our investment since 2012 has made a huge difference. In 2012, presiding officer, only a quarter of premises had access to fibre broadband in the Highlands. Now over three quarters have such access. In Orkney, Shetland and the Western Isles, not a single premise had access. Now it is respectively 62%, 65% and 50%. That connectivity enables people to make lives uh, and livelihoods on the land, to diversify, to create sustainable livelihoods and to collaborate with neighbours and communities to find common solutions. In conclusion, presiding officer, it, that approach is as important to supporting crofting more generally as it is to reforming its statutory frameworks. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we must move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question or to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Peter Chapman. Mr Chapman, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, and I am grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. May I also take this opportunity to join the Minister in welcome the, welcoming the newly elected Commission and wishing them and their teams all the best as they take forward a programme to improve legislation and governance around crofting and secure the future of this important part of Scotland's heritage. Like many rural communities, the crofting community is fragile and needs support and help to move forward with confidence. It is important that the new Commission has the confidence of the crofting community and that it works to understand and resolve the many issues around, in particular, common grazings, which were an ongoing source of, source of concern during the term of the last Commission. The Cabinet Secretary will be as aware as I am of the issues that have recently affected the Commission, in that I believe it became too hands-on with dealing with disputes. In order to prevent this, would he agree with me that the Commission should look now to take a more executive function in shaping and leading policy? 
Cabinet Secretary. Well, I welcome Mr Chapman's uh, remarks and uh, I, I, I suspect that they will be echoed across the Chamber and that is right and proper that we express our support for the Commission uh, in moving away from the difficult times last year. I think we all recognise, without going into details, uh, Presiding Officer, that there, there were a series of unfortunate uh, episodes, not to say confrontations, which existed between the Commission and certain townships with regard to common grazing, their regulation and issues there and end. Uh, it is up to the Commission to take forward these matters. I think we must, particularly given the review of its governance, which has just been completed and the action plan they formed today, allow it to do its job. But I'm pretty sure I would say to Mr Chapman that, it's, uh, that the, the, new chief, uh, the, the Chief Executive and the new convener will, I'm sure, be taking a close interest in what is said today and the messages conveyed. Uh, and I very much support Mr Chapman's view that uh, we all need to move away from the somewhat confrontational and very unfortunate episodes that uh, I think caused huge ructions and personal uh, uh, concern amongst many individual crofters and communities. So I think that is the right course ahead. And I think in the new commission, the newly elected commission and the new convener, we have the right people to take forward that work. Rhoda Grant, please. Um, can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement and congratulate Rod Mackenzie on his appointment as Chair. Um, I also welcome the change in governance arrangements, but I'm concerned about the lack of detail in the statement about them. The problems arose from the 2010 Act, which changed the Commission from the Crofters Commission to the Crofting Commission, a move from a culture of assistance to a culture of regulation. Practice on the ground and indeed the statement today show that this has not worked. Will he now reverse these changes and delegate further powers to grazing's committees to enable them to develop their own townships? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, well, first of all, I, I, I hope that I made clear that of three issues I highlighted in the government's review, one of them is to clarify the scope and extent of the duties of individual commissioners. There was, I think, an element of dubiety about that. That is now being taken forward following the review. Uh, and the action plan published, I think, today. Second of all, um, you know, presiding officer, the, the member fairly refers to the previous legislation uh, in 2010, I think, um, and she's right to do so. But, you know, law is words on a page. My personal view is that the difficulties which arose were not perhaps so much of, about the law, but about various personal issues, which I really don't want to go into. Now that those are really behind us, I think we have uh, the opportunity in future to let the Commission get on with its job, a job that I think we all respect and appreciate and want to be supportive of in this chamber. Uh, and I'm sure that, uh, that that is the approach that uh, Rhoda Grant and our colleagues uh, will take. Thank you. I have 10 members wishing to ask questions. I hope to get them all in. So questions, please, not uh, statements. Kate Forbes, followed by Edwin Mountain, please. To ask the Cabinet Secretary how the Crofting Commission can better support active crofting and ensure crofts are used productively so that, in the words of the Cabinet Secretary, crofting supports people to remain on the land and bring people back to the land. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I think this is uh, one of the missions of the of Crofting Commission, that this is exactly what they want to do, working in collaboration with the Scottish Government, but also working with uh, the local authorities in the islands and the mainland and uh, Highlands and Islands Enterprise. Uh, so I absolutely agree that uh, helping people to work active, actively crofts, uh, to have access to crofts, and have access on housing crofts are key objectives that we all share. As I mentioned, our aim is to re-people the Highlands and Islands, and crofting has a key role to play in that regard. Edwin Mountain, followed by Stuart Stevenson. Mr Mountain. I'd like to welcome the Cabinet Secretary's commitment to a review of cofferting law and a new bill. The REC Committee was clear that a legislative platform which fits the reality of modern crofting practices is needed. Will the Cabinet Secretary undertake to ensure time to allow new legislation to be proposed, uh, par uh, sorry, scrutinised and enacted before the end of this Parliament? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, we, we are committed to legislating within the lifetime of uh, this parliament. So I'm happy, I think, to provide him with the, that assurance that uh, he seeks. It's a, a commitment to which we are, we are bound. Having said that, 
Uh, I'm certainly of the view, as I think I mentioned in the statement, presenting officer, that we need to get this right, and that does take a lot of time and discussion. There's lots of valuable information we have. The report from the committee recently, the Shucksmith report, what's called the SUMP, which is um, an aggre uh, aggregate um, collection of the wisdom of some of our expert crofting lawyers about changes that need to be made. But we also need to consider which option we wish to go down, a fundamental reform, uh, 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 the SUMP and implementation of that, a consolidation act, or a variety of these different approaches. I think it is right that we take time to listen to views, as I think Mr. Mountain has advocated, and if so, he is correct, uh, to take time to sound out these views. And also, I will personally seek to maintain the broad consensual approach in this parliament that we've brought to this issue, which uh, I think will certainly help us get on the right track to do that task before the end of this parliament. Stuart Stevenson, followed by David Stewart. Mr. Stevenson. Uh, can I welcome the uh, news that 4,000 crofts are now registered. Can the uh, Cabinet Secretary tell us how we're going to help uh, communities ensure that the remaining 14,000 crofts uh, are appropriately registered? Cabinet Secretary. It, well, yes, indeed, there, there is a, a lot of work that, uh, that has been done and a lot more that uh, needs to be done. Um, since the crofting register commenced, the government has been working with registers of Scotland and the Commission to help crofting communities complete registration of their crofts. Uh, registers of Scotland have engaged with 346 townships in the past year and continues to promote the benefits of registering. To date, ROS has held meetings with 18 townships and supported a further 38 communities. So I think the, in crofting terms, the Register of Scotland is an activist although it may not uh, term itself thus. Uh, and from my own work in overseeing Register of Scotland presiding officer for the previous five years, I know that they bring a huge professionalism and enormous commitment to that task. Uh, so there's a, a lot of work to be done, uh, but of course, Register of Scotland are the right people to be in charge of leading it. David Stewart, followed by John Mason. Mr Stewart, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide more detail on the proposed support mechanisms being put in place to underpin effective board decision-making and collective adherence to those decisions? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the primary way in which we sought to provide assistance was by collaboratively agreeing that there should be a review of governance. That review was carried out independently of the Scottish Government and the Crofting Commission. It's reported uh, and it's recognised ways in which the decision-making mechanism needs to be improved. I outlined that really in very general terms and highlighted three particular areas that I think have been recognised as causative of concern. Just today, the Commission has published an action plan and I'm sure Mr Stewart will want to study it. Uh, and I'm very happy to engage with him and other members about how we take this forward. But it is, of course, presiding officer, the prime responsibility of the Commission to do its job under the new leadership. I believe we can have great confidence that that is exactly what it will do. John Mason, to be followed by John Finney. Mr Mason. Thank you. It's very encouraging to hear the Cabinet Secretary express this confidence eh, about the Commission going forward. What, what does he feel are the main challenges that crofting faces in the coming year or so, and eh, how does he feel that we as a Chamber Committee himself can help them? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think uh, crof crofters and those who, who actively work crofts and who live in crofts are are fairly resilient people and they're, they're used to making their own way, making their own lives, taking responsibility for their own actions, but they do need some support. And I think in particular, the key area I would highlight in response to Mr. Mason's question, presiding officer, is the LFAS scheme, the less favored areas scheme. Now, as we know, the LFAS scheme has seen changes in the EU, which uh, we did not support, but would see the reduction of the overall payment by 20%, unless the European Parliament postpones that, which I hope they do. Uh, but we also need to ensure that that support is maintained over the years to come. And that is because I'm absolutely certain of this, that hill farming in Scotland provides enormous benefit. Uh, and of course, uh, farming and crofting counties are, are, are recipients of LFAS support. Uh, so continuance of that support by one means or other, and in the event of a Brexit, post-Brexit, is absolutely essential to continuance of active 
crofting and looking after livestock presiding officer. So I think that is perhaps, to answer Mr. Mason's question, the key challenge that, the, that active crofters are facing at the current time. John, Philly, John Finney followed by uh, Tavish Scott. Mr. Finney. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, can I thank you for your comments on housing and uh, can I thank you for the cash in housing? Um, homelessness and fuel poverty are two issues that blight communities, including the crofting communities. Can you encourage the Crofting uh, Commission to, to maximise opportunities to work with local authorities, registered social landlords and high to improve the number of houses and the energy efficiency of houses, please? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I, I, I think that's a... Uh, something that uh, I would urge them to do, although I, I know that already a lot of work is done uh, on these uh, matters. And, you know, I am uh, quite proud of the fact that, uh, uh, that this government, my successors and now myself, have uh, uh, been able to see 800, 800 cases where young people and their families have received a grant, a relatively modest grant in the scheme of things from the Scottish Government. That's 800 people in the crofting counties. That is repeopling the Highlands and Islands. I think that resonates with the kind of message that Mr Finney and myself support and I suspect have always supported uh, land for the people, I think was the cry. And we have for 800 people turned that cry into a reality. But that is why I have added to the funding of two million this year, thanks to uh, the generosity and support of my colleague, Mr Mackay, who's present in the chamber, presiding officer, uh, given the close interest uh, he takes in crofting. Uh, Tavis Scott, followed by Gail Ross. Mr Scott, please. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Um, on, on the policy that uh, the Cabinet Secretary discussed earlier on, would he look at two areas? Firstly, the need to change the one-size-fits-all crofting regulation to an approach that is based on the needs of individual crofting counties. Secondly, would he accept the need for whole croft decrofting? And he will understand the importance of that issue uh, across the Highlands and Islands. And finally, on his point about connections, would he accept that Community Broadband Scotland have failed after three years to make a broadband scheme happen in Fair Isle. Would he undertake to look into that matter as it's deep concern to the Crofters' concern? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, on, the, on the last point, I'd be happy to get more information from Mr Scott, and certainly I will look into it, of course, uh, and undertake uh, to do so. On the first two points, uh, yes, uh, I'm absolutely aware that in Shetland there is a different approach uh, uh, from uh, the rest of the communities that uh, are, are covered by the Crofting Commission and uh, that therefore the Commission should respect that in the work that it does uh, and in respect of decrofting I'm also acutely aware of the importance of this process, the importance that is carried out speedily, efficiently in order to prevent delays in respect of transactions and to speed up the process of uh, what I've termed today as repeopling the Highlands and Islands. Gail Ross to be followed by Finlay Carson. Ms Ross, please. Thank you, President Officer. Can I also welcome Mr Rod McKenzie to his new post? Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me if the Crofting Commission are accepting applications to decroft from owner-occupiers and what its position will be on this issue going forward? Cabinet Secretary. Well, this is one of, one of the kind of hot topics that I hope to engage with uh, fairly directly with the Crofting Commission in due course. Um, Gail Ross, of course, takes a very close interest in that for constituents, uh, uh, and it's a very important topic. I don't want to kind of prejudge the approach the Commission will take, but I think we all want to achieve the same objectives here of bringing people back on to the land, and therefore I'm very happy to continue to engage uh, with Gail Ross and to pursue that particular issue, which I know is an important issue with the Commission. Finlay Carson, we follow Marie Todd. Mr Carson. Uh, we welcome the Cabinet Secretary's aim to enable different ways of working the land and to create sustainable crofting. Can the Cabinet Secretary shed any light or provide an example of how he intends to achieve these aims? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, a, a variety of methods. You know, plainly, the CAGS grants provides very practical support, I think, uh, for crofters. In fact, some non-crofters are quite envious of, of elements of it, as I'm sure Mr. Carson is aware. That's one example. Secondly, I have alluded to the investment in uh, connectivity that has been made uh, in, in the first case in the contract uh, with BT, with the Highlands and Islands, and that has provided access to uh, many people in island communities where that access hitherto did not exist, uh, and therefore is a good thing. And thirdly, of course, I've alluded to the Croft Grants Scheme 
where we revise to increase the level of the grants quite significantly uh, and is providing direct benefit to actual individual, individuals, couples, families to establish a home. I visited some of them. I think it's a very effective, cost-effective uh, way of helping to sustain the crofting communities in general. So those are three examples. And finally, of course, we aim to bring forward a crofting development plan. And I think the point that Mr. Carson makes is quite right, uh, that uh, the sustainability of crofting, which of course, as farming activity, is very marginal. There's very, very few, if any, crofters whose sole livelihood uh, was derived from crofting uh, in terms of their, their overall uh, earnings. For most people, it is something that they do as a way of life, not as a means of, uh, of ensuring uh, a, a livelihood of financial income each year. But the Crofting Development Plan will take forward all of these matters, uh, Presiding Officer. Marie Todd. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Would the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that it's essential for the future of crofting in Scotland that any new bill reforming crofting is a success? and therefore provide an assurance that we take our time to consider what's best for crofting and work closely with the stakeholders, crofters and communities affected as openly as possible throughout this whole process. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I suppose I could observe, from having been a minister for 10 years, presiding officer, that it's never particularly difficult for government to take some time to do things. Uh, but uh, that, uh, that aberrant reflection aside, in this case, I think it is the right approach precisely because some of the previous legislation in this parliament on crofting has been subject to the criticism that we haven't spent enough time thinking, we haven't spent enough time listening and discussing in an area where there are diverse views, in many cases extremely strongly held. So I hope it is a view across this chamber uh, that in fact that we take our time is not out of any desire to delay things, but a desire to get it right and bring about a piece of legislation that takes crofting forward for, for uh, many decades to come in this century. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes questions on that issue. I'll allow a few minutes for front benches to take their places move on before we move on to the next item of business.